similar recipe to it where you have some dead cards against every deck game one or sort of inefficient cards and you can clean that up in the post board games well we're gonna see how it goes Koenig has his opening seven he's gonna keep gonna start with like a taxing probe against the set the second to lay his hand out you see a sensei's divine top on the top a couple white bordered planes too he says why don't you spread those out there's a volcanic island, Arid Mesa, Caracas. So you must know what his opponent's playing. A fluster storm and a flooded strand. That is a stinky hand. Yeah, not stinky if you know what you're playing against. <laughs> That's for sure. Not well, stinky at all. He's very. Uh, this hand's very exposed to sneak attack. Has some game against mm -hmm. Show and Tell. So Ryan taking down the contents of Joe's hand. Uh, draw off the Gitaxian Pro. So there's a Misty Rainforest. Sacrifice that. Kind of go down to eight, excuse me, 17, Will Koenig. Finds a volcanic island. Knows he doesn't have to play, waste, play around or against Wasteland. So you can just go get the non basics, just go around. And Joe's reputation sort of precedes him at this point if you're a player in the area. So yeah. Uh, yeah. You're, you know you're probably in a, in a, waste, a Wasteland free match. Yeah. So there's that. Here is preordained to start the show. So one and two. You see an island and looks like a scalding tarn with the two cards. Also sneak attack already in Koenig's hand. So one on top, one on bottom. Draw a card. And it's a scalding tarn. And there's a lotus petal. And pass it back. So a lot of setup for Koenig on the first turn. There's a volcanic island from the set and just says, eh, boring stuff. Pass it back. Spell pierce the draw for Koenig. Could end up being pretty relevant here. Just going to pass the turn back. One second to draw his card. Shifts it to the back of me. It looks like Jason Mind Sculptor was uh, one of his two draw steps so far here. And it looks like his second draw step was a land, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I think so. Here's a planes. There's a top. Going to resolve. Pass the turn back. Brainstorm is going to happen here. It looks like on the end steps. So hit one, two, and three. There's a gristle brand over there at Coding Sand already, too. You can see a ponder volcanic island and another brainstorm off of this brainstorm. So we'll see what two cards he puts back. And remember, you know, the makeup of Joe's hand on the first turn was he had some protection against show and tell, but no protection against sneak attack. Mm -hmm. Koenig with the lotus petal could threaten to have it in play as early as next turn. Looks like Ryan's looking to put back some cantrips. Gonna sack that fetch land? He's not. A little well, surprised. Oh, cantrips are pretty powerful. I'm surprised he had nothing in his in his hand there that he wants to shuffle away. Yeah. Maybe he just wants to keep brainstorm, I guess. It's a good insurance policy if in case something goes awry this turn as a way to reassemble. So he's gonna sacrifice the turn, get an island out of his deck, shuffle up, and we'll see exactly how he's gonna. Uh, start this turn off. Is he going to put the pedal to the metal? He has brought sneak attack forward. I think this is a really good really good spot to test the waters if you're Koenig. There's four mana. How about a red enchantment? Joe, as we know, has not, have not drawn an answer, but he does have a top in play. Which gives him three looks at a force of will. See swords. Brought a blue card to the back. Got an island in there, too. Looks like that's okay. You just pass the turn back. So now you're a little bit scared because there is just a uh, sneak attack just staring you in the face, threatening to do something ridiculous next turn. Joe has found Vendillion Click. So it's that's not, sweet. not a bad draw for Joe if, if Ryan is on exactly one mm -hmm. creature to sneak into play. Then Joe can strip that out of his hand. You can also see the upside from, from Ryan's perspective of keeping a cantrip left over in his hand, so he has more shots to, to reassemble in case Joe had some answer. Joe says, I'm dealing click right now. I need to try to get the creature out of your hand, assuming that there is one over there. So let's take a look. You see a hand of Spell Pierce, Gristle Brand, a Fetch Land, and a Brainstorm that we knew about. So almost certainly Gristle Brand is going to the bottom here. So Click's going to draw one. Click will put the card to the bottom, give him one. Two for the draw step, three more from Brainstorm. So five shots at it, basically. Yeah. Plus potentially five minimum. Plus potentially other cantrips that yeah. you can find through the Brainstorm. And Joe has a lot of draws to avoid here. Ancient Tomb is the first draw. Second draw is Force of Will. All right. Brainstorm. 
Did we fade draw three, four, and five? Oh my goodness. Well, there's ponder. There's a ponder. Okay, so we're not out of the woods yet. So we got to re redraw. Yep. But so there's a. Okay, there's no fetch line right now. Oh, hey, there's a fetch line. Never mind. Yeah, it's take it back. Yeah, it's got the tarn. All right, so there is a tarn. So we have Sacrifice. minimum four redraws uh -huh. through this ponder. So potential look at nine cards this turn. Another Volcanic Island out. Shuffling furiously. Can Koenig find an Emrakul or a Gristlebrand and try to put this one away? All right. Ponder time. One, two, three. Preordained probe. <laughs> so some re, <laughs> re, re draws. Yes. Uh, do you take the mystery card here? Because let's say you keep you keep preordain. You put the other two back, then you preordain the two cards to the bottom. So I think it's just better to shuffle, right? Um, oh, actually, no, because he can go probe. Yeah, okay, so what he can do is go probe, preordain it's on top, and then he gets to see one card that he knows about and then a new one for the preordain scry. Yeah. And if he has to put those both to the bottom, then he gets another new card. Yeah, okay. he has a re... Re, 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 draw. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly what you said. <laughs> <laughs> so there's preordained. Now we're going to cast this one. And Joe's just sitting here just... One, two. <laughs> misdirection. Either of those will do. And a mystery card. <laughs> oh, my goodness. And he missed them all. Play goes on. Unbelievable. But it is worth noting that, you know, we're still in a holding pattern here to some degree. If, if Joe runs out of his chase here, it gets hit by Spell Pierce. He yeah, only has a plus X storm for cover, and so uh, it's not like Ryan's fizzled by any stretch. He still has a sneak attack in play. He still has draw steps. Still has his draw steps. He did take some damage to do all that stuff, though. That's the other thing. And there's a uh, there's a Caracas now. So we can start trying to set up Caracas with a dealing flick. Yeah. Although that's a tough that's a tough slog here, as uh, Ryan has enough red mana to activate his uh, uh -oh, oh Spaghettios. Oh, how things have changed. I will activate sneak attack. I couldn't miss forever, Joe. Sorry. And he has a second red mana, so even if Joe responds by practicing the click and clicking in response to sneak attack, Ryan can simply reactivate mm -hmm. sneak attack. And The big question here is, uh, does Ryan know that trick? You know, I think that's what Joe's thinking to himself, is does he know that trick? Uh, Ryan has a, a, a pretty good rules knowledge yes. from my experience playing with, with him as a local player. See, let's set. Considering that Vendillion click play of bouncing with his own Caracas and Vendillion in response to the sneak attack activation, but as you mentioned, Ryan has two more volcanic islands and that Lotus Petal too that can generate red mana to just say, all right, respond, sneak attack again. So Joe, all right, he's gonna let yeah. it happen. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on, everyone? Yeah. What's up, dude? Joe has a Krakus here that he can use to stop the Emrakul before combat, but again, Ryan can just use an extra red mana to sneak attack it back into play again. It's kind of funny, because I think the big problem here is the Force of Will that uh, Ryan has in his hand, because what Joe could do is say, all right, bounce my bounce my Vendillion click and float mana, let Annihilator resolve, and then replay the click, but then Ryan's just going to go, all right, Force of Will that, and yeah, that's exactly what Joe's going to do. He's going to float the mana, sacrifice to the Annihilator, you can draw a card at the top, too. Top goes on top. A little bit awkward if that was a turn. I guess maybe he knew a top card was deck. That no, would a terminus would have been a touch awkward. And Joe says, all right, one second. Are we saying that there's been a pass on the... Okay. No, 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 no. Okay. I think what Joe's saying is I'm not passing phase yet. What I am going to do... I'm going to cast some Dillion Click. And what Ryan is going to do, I believe, is go Force of Will this immediately. This feels like a pretty good spot to just... He can even hard cast Force of mm -hmm. Will. Leave himself with a Spell Pierce. Puts him down to 8, but 8's not 0, so there is a hard cast Force of Will. Get that out of here. So there that goes. Emrakul's going to put the set down to 4. And he also has... No permanence. And shuffle them all back in is what Conan's going to do. So the game actually isn't over yet, but it's a race for Joe to reassemble his board, take control of the game, and eventually kill Ryan before Ryan finds 
one of his creatures. Yes. Is, Ryan is he obviously heavily favored here. Yes. There's a flooded strand. So Joe's going to start by sacrificing this and going down to three. Three, three, three. Divine top, uh, and I think this is going to be worth a spell pierce. Yeah, I think I agree. I like the spell pierce here. With Joe so, you know, light on total cards and mana, that top is, would be a valuable piece in him reassembling a hand to try to, to fight through this. So It's time to fade the world. No. Nope. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this. And right. kill you. Yep. yep. All right, so Ryan Koenig is going to win game number one here between Sneak and Show and Blue Light Miracle. Show Lissette back against the wall. You see Koenig is 6-2, and two, Lissette sitting at 6-1-1. One one. Again, we're not sure if uh, Joe can make top eight. If things do break his way, however, it looks like he'll be able to do that. Yeah, and it's not surprising for, for me to see Joe lose the first game here. Mm -hmm. uh, like I said, I think there's probably a lot of matchups in the room where Joe is slightly behind in game one. Yeah. But... This deck makes very good use of the full 75. Yeah. And, and, you know, you have to play some amount of dead cards in every matchup because Legacy is such a wide field. Yep. So many things you need to anticipate for. But in the sideboard games, you can be much more surgical. Speaking of the sideboard, I know you have it in front of you. So how is he going to change his deck to a shore up matchup like this, which is very common nowadays in Legacy? Well, he has a, a, a red splash in the deck off of the Volcanic Islands for two copies of Red Elemental Blast and a Pyroblast in the sideboard. Expect those to come in. The additional Flusterstorm, a Pything Needle, and Engineered Explosives. Uh, sorry, not an explosives, rather, but a terminus, uh, a needle, a venser, wear tear. He has a lot of cards to fight over spells and to fight over the permanent sneak attack. Mm -hmm. I expect to see all those come in with him shaving out um, his rest in peace, his three copies of swords to plowshares, uh, and maybe a couple other uh, of his more fidgety pieces. Maybe counterbalance is not very good in this matchup. Yeah, that's what I was thinking, too, is how good exactly is counterbalance? Because it's a great, obviously, countering the cantrips. Uh, and there's certainly something to be said for that, but, you know, and when you're on the play, you can just go top counterbalance and start countering those cantrips like crazy, which Sneak and Show needs to actually assemble things, but there are draws that Sneak and Show has where they don't need any of the cantrips at all. Yeah, so he has a lot of powerful cards to bring in. He has a couple obvious cuts, and then after that, I think it's some, some amount of shaving needs to happen. Take a look at Koenig's side here. Two Blood Moons, two Through the Breach, two Defense Grid, two Surgical Extraction, two Pyroclasm, two Pyroblast, and two Echoing Truth. Blood Moon, we know one thing about Joe. His base account is high. Yes, and even with a red percent. splash, he's found a lot of ways to play. Uh, he's found a way to play four islands and two planes. Yeah. Uh, Joe traditionally plays very basic land heavy, mm -hmm. and so Blood Moon not at its best here. Uh, you see the two copies are through the breach, so that would give him redundant effects to go on with those four sneak attacks and four show and tells. Uh, if Conan decides he wants to do that. Defense Grid, a card that was really popular in Sneak and Show. Um, but not as popular anymore, saying that it just doesn't ever really work the way that I want it to. You would think with a deck that has six, in, in between in between four to six Soul Ring lands, the defense would be great against a counter base, counter spell based strategy, but it doesn't really end up being the case that often. Well, a lot of the anti combo decks in Legacy play a mixture of hand disruption and counter spells. So l relying solely on Leyline of Sanctity or Defense Grid, things that answer one thing but not the other mm -hmm. is somewhat risky. Against Joe, however, Defense Grid is, is great because almost everything that he's doing to interact with Ryan involves reacting on Ryan's turn. Sure. Mostly with counter spells, a little bit of a disenchant effect. Uh, so Defense Grid has fallen out of flavor, but I think Ryan will be happy to have him in his sideboard in this matchup. And the only other thing that really does interest me is Pyroblast. But, you know, again, how great is Pyroblast in this matchup? I guess it does counter a card like Medillion Click, does counter a card like Venser, Pyro, uh, Counterbalance, excuse me, if you deem that necessary. But I'm not sure if that's exactly where you want to be here, having a lot of reactive cards. Yeah, I, it also helps you push through some things. And uh, some of Joe's best cards in the matchup are, are blue cards like Venser or Vendillion Click or Jace. Okay. So I think it's worth having a couple Pyroblasts. It's not the most efficient thing in the world, and I definitely agree that you don't want to be too counterspell heavy, but so many of Joe's best cards are blue, I, I feel like having a couple Pyroblasts is, is well worth it. Okay. Well, we'll see how the two players do end up sideboarding here as Joe's taking a look at his opening hand. I don't think he's too thrilled with this. He shows a Mystic Gate. It's a one land. It's uh, all counterspells and one Mystic Gate as a land. <laughs> Yes, I love yes, it. I love no. it. I like it. There's an island, and there is a ponder. 
Gristlebrand, Show and Tell, and Volcanic Island. Not bad. Not shabby. Not bad at all. So, three cards. And he's going to, ooh. Okay. Jeez, his hand must be good if he's shuffling that away. <laughs> I mean, yikes. I love this keep. I do, too. Way. Joe, you might as well just let it rip, you know? What's the worst land he can roll off right now? Is there um, a bad one? No, they're all fine. Okay, they, they all turn it on, right? Yeah, the, no, there's a, a second Mystic Gate. Oh, Sorry. boy. <laughs> the stories we are about to Ooh, tell. <laughs> Draws a force of will. Naturally. Mm -hmm. Yep, your turn. There's a preordain. One and two. Two lands. Kind of put Volcanic on top, Island on the bottom. The volcanic, come on to the grip. Into play. Pass the turn. Joe, bang. Bang. Jared Mesa right off the top. Let's play some magic, shall we? All right. Joe's got a, a really powerful grip of reactive cards. Yes. I mean, I think he's going to start off with counterbalance. Is he willing to put the shields down, though? I mean, he has a bunch of force of wills to protect himself. He may not want to run this into a spell pierce or a yeah. pyroblast, but when you're missing land drops, it, it, you know, sometimes you just kind of have to use your mana, but Joe's going to hang back and wait for a little bit. There's an island. Oh, Koenig has a uh, blood moon here. That's, uh, that's probably worth fighting over. And awkwardly enough, Joe's fetch land does not allow him to get a basic island, yeah. so he kind of needs to fight over this. Well, let's see if some tundra or planes. But with so much, you know, the basic planes feels like a pretty big cost to here. I know Joe, I, I've seen his hand, there's a red card in it, so Volcanic seems like a good place to start. Okay. So Blood Moon on the stack. But it doesn't look like that's going to resolve today. I see Spell Pierce there brought to the front. And... He's probably going to add blue-blue with his gate. Yeah. Now there's Pierce. All right, get that Blood Moon out of here. And I think Koenig's probably happy with that exchange. Blood Moon not at its best necessarily against against Joe. And every little piece of permission that you're able to squeeze out of Joe's hand makes the eventual process of going off a lot easier. Yeah. So here's Counterbalance from a set, and that's going to resolve. But no top out there, so now it's time for a fun Counterbalance. Yeah. My favorite kind. The blind Counterbalance. Yeah. So show and tell puts on the stack. First things first. Ha! Brainstorm. Yep. Brainstorm on top. Although Brainstorm, not a bad draw for Joe next turn. Yeah. Can help him find land drops potentially if he wants to go that route. Also gives him a lot of flexibility with the counterbalance. I kind of like this. Now, so he's got Venser in his hand. Huh? You want to play a little game? He can counter it or he can let it resolve. The risk, of course, if he's show and telling in Gristlebrand, then your Venser is not as good. You would rather have fought over this. So yes. There's a guessing game that Joe has to go through in his head right now. If it's sneak attack or if it's Emrakul, it's excellent. Oh, yes. He's letting it resolve. This is awesome. And it looks uh, like... Uh, uh, pick her up. Sorry. Joe rewarded for his gamble. Now, both with the one land hand that he kept and by guessing that it would be Emrakul or sneak attack and not Gristlebrand. You know what they say. I no, don't. No gamble, no future. Uh, sure. That's, that's, that's what they say. Now Joe's got Brainstorm in his hand. I like what he's going to do with Brainstorm here. He's actually going to use it, use it as a way to make his counterbalance counterspell. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Instead of trying to hit a land drop and doing it in his main phase and sacking with the fetch land, all that fun stuff, he's just going to go, you know what, Brainstorm, put a three back on top or something of that nature. As here is a show and tell yet again from Koenig. Counterbalance is on the stack. Beast Storm. Adds two blue and brainstorms. Ideally, we'd like to find a three to counter for free, but if not, no big deal. Still plenty of force of wills to fight over this. Drew a spell first, too. Ooh. So good thing he filled that blue mana. A naughty Nelson. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, particularly uh, click on top, too. So, okay, that's going to go. Pass the turn and back. Joe firmly in the driver's seat now. I mean, he might just, just beat Ryan to death with the Spencer. Yeah. And he does have a land, too, for the Vendillion click as well. So there's the basic planes. Seriously, the ugliest planes in the history of the world. Those were the planes from my childhood. That does not matter to me. 
there's some nostalgia for me. That's all I'm saying. Okay. Not. I not started. De- I'm not defending it. I don't want to give the okay. impression that I'm defending. it. I started in Ice Age, baby. I started with Wooly Mammoth and friends. There is a Lotus Petal. So now we're getting into sneak attack range. Looks like this might just be a pass, though. Well, Joe has to determine again what he wants to do about this. Let's start with a cantrip. All right. How about a counterbalance activation? Maybe, maybe not. Joe knows. Joe knows. Joe knows. Excuse me. What's on top of his deck? So he doesn't want to give away free information. Scalding tarn. Scalding tarn is what it looks like off this preordain. Coding doesn't look thrilled with these two cards. Don't think he needs any more lands, honestly. Maybe yeah. he needs one more at most this game. So he is going to take one of them. This makes it so that he can actually play Sneak Attack and then activate it all in the same turn. Because there's a Scalding Tarn. You see his hand right now, too. A double Sneak Attack, Gristle Brand, Spell Pierce. And we'll see everything, just in case I did miss one. Because now Vendillion Click is here. And we see a hand of uh, the Emrakul, too. So the plus side for Ryan is, is that his hand's pretty redundant. There's not one piece that Joe can take away because he has redundant sneak attacks and redundant creatures to sneak attack into play. Mm-hmm. The downside is that it seems Joe's going to be able, through the force of will and the, the counterbalance, to, to fight through all this stuff. So. Sure. So Joe's trying to figure out exactly what he's supposed to take. Do you take anything here? I think there's a really good argument to take sneak attack because it requires so many resources for Ryan to to fire off a sneak attack. Okay. Yeah, he's just gonna take one of them. So it makes it so that you only have to worry about one sneak attack as opposed right. to two. Yeah, Conan drew a uh, drew a attack team pro. So yeah, pretty good draw. If the set's gonna draw a card, drew a force of will, gonna come in for five. Gonna knock Conan down to eleven. And that fetch land, if it doesn't sacrifice, that puts Koenig down to 10. That puts him on a two turn instead yeah. of a three turn. It, there's just so few draws in Koenig's deck that make a difference at this point if you leave him with only the one sneak attack. Sure. You have, with all your permission, you have that one covered. You have a Pyroblast in your hand covering you against um, Show and Tell. It's just, real. it's really hard to imagine Ryan being able to cobble together a hand that can go off in the amount of time that Joe is giving him, given the amount of pressure that Koenig is under. So Conan is going to sacrifice that Scalding Tarn, going to put himself down to 10. So he's on the two-turn clock from the two legendary blue creatures. Going to search out a Volcanic Island. Conan has really stepped up his beard game since I've gotten to know him, too. It's it's a good to beard. Yeah, it used to not be like this. Yeah, it's a, that's a healthy beard. Yeah. That's not, that is something that takes time. That's not... It's that's no, not it's right. not on. Lo- no, it's why wow, I respect his beard quite a bit. Not on the level of Chris Van Meter right now. No, he's certainly got some work to do to get there. Yeah, don't we all? But but overall, respectable. I give it a, I give it a B, a healthy B. Conway draws another Crystal Brand. All right, attack team pro. Gonna go down to eight. Joe has to decide what he wants to do about this, if anything. He can counter it for free with his Divining Top, but the Divining Top might be floating something of relevance. Yeah. yeah. And he knows that Koenig has a Spell Pierce in the grip. I believe he knows that. Another Force of Will there. So it's just an issue of... What's the damage that, that Koenig can do with a blind card off the top of his mm-hmm. deck? Is it worth doing anything about mm-hmm. this? You see, Joe's going to consider all his options before moving forward. Puts those cards back. There's a one. It's a Fluster Storm. That's actually a pretty good one to show. Yep. And Koenig says, all right, got to get moving. Sneak attack. Joe, two, three, Jace. Yep, just yeah. just dealing with yeah. this divining top counterbalance. That's the turn back. A quickly untap will set. You know he's already got a draw. He's going to start by ta- topping on upkeep. Probably wants to keep a four up there. Worth noting here is that Joe still has two copies of Forcible in his hand. Yeah, hasn't had to use one yet. He's got the wall up, man. Yeah. He has the wall up. He could put his hand on the table right now and Koenig would concede. 
Conan will draw a card. It's a sneak attack. Ooh, that's pretty lucky. <laughs> <laughs> I'll show you yours. Right. You show me mine. All right. Well, I guess we'll probably be. Yep. Spin. Make sure it. I didn't set it bad. It's set good. There's Jace again. And that's going to do it. So, Joe, that's going to win game number two here. The Blue White Miracles versus, versus, excuse me, Ryan Koenig playing Sneak and Show. His build seems a lot more lean in the post board games. Oh, uh, yeah. That's for sure. Yeah. No argument there, man. No argument there. So, if you're in, in Koenig C, do you change your configuration anymore? What, any, any differently, play versus draw? Nah, not for me. I think you just kind of keep it the same, just like. I don't know, like, I, I feel like Joe's deck is just, as you mentioned, really tough to beat after sideboard. And I don't think there's a lot you can change. I don't think there's really a lot of gambles you can take either. Again, I don't really love defense grid after sideboard, but, I mean, I guess, like, if, you know, that was a really heavy force of will, fluster storm, um, you know, spell pierce type game from the set, so maybe defense grid could do some work. I still like Blood Moon. Sure. If, well, the question is, with the defense grid, if not here, then when? I mean, if, if you put this card on your sideboard, you're now playing against a deck with... I don't know, well, rough guess of 12 counter spells against you in a post board game. Mm -hmm. If you're not bringing in the defense grid here, I don't know what those slots are doing in your sideboard. Yeah, I'm kind of with you. And that's why, you know, a player like Huey Jensen and the guys who played uh, Sneak and Show at the Invitational, uh, BBD, Brad, Jerry, they moved away from defense grid. They moved towards a card like Swan Song because it actually just does more. Yes. Yeah, than defense grid does. You can also, you can also only afford to bring in so many cards where if you flood out, if you're missing a piece, if you draw multiple copies of them, whatever, uh, they aren't that productive. Yeah. Defense grid fails that test, whereas Swan Song definitely passes. Agreed. If you draw two defense grids, it's very sometimes that could be good mm -hmm. if your opponent's all on counter spells. Oftentimes, you're going to be in a spot where you're just missing pieces because two of the cards you've drawn early on are defense grids. Yeah. Two Swan Songs are actually great. At They're good. Yeah, actually yeah. Quite, quite powerful at helping you go off. Love Swan Song. I love Swan Song. I just want that card to see more play. I think it's just a really cool card. It is pretty sweet. Yeah. It's a little weird to me that they put it in the same set with a null because they feel like they serve kind of similar purposes. They sure. Feel like kind of similar designs in a lot of respects. Sure. But it is neat. You make a good point there. Hadn't considered that. So both players are going to shuffle up for game number three. Last one, best one. And we'll see if things do break. Break the set's way if he can win this game. First of all, that's step one. Yes. And then... You know, I got a bad feeling we're going to be announcing Joe Lissette in ninth place. Yeah, especially but. with this pair down. I mean, this is this is really rough mm -hmm. on, in a number of ways. He's already, uh, it looks like he's on the bad side of the bubble to begin with, and now this will do damage to his tiebreakers, even if he is to win this match. Yeah, and that's how it feels to me, too. But we'll see. We'll see. We're not positive. No. We're not mathematicians. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I am not. If only. And really, I, you know, as straight-laced and as much as, as Joe kind of colors inside the line how he plays, I really like that Mystic Gatekeep. I love it. Just, you're, you've come this far, just snap it off. Yeah. You know, big fan. It's a nice YOLO. Take a look at things here. I think Joe has the one Mystic Gate again. <laughs> well, if you did it once, you got to do it again. Uh, he has two Force, it looks like at least a Force of Will. He's uh, got a Counterbalance, balance, a Brainstorm, a, brainstorm. a, cl a, a Click. It's the Mystic Gate again. What's the problem? Yeah, it was good the first we time. We won the last time. Very easily, in yeah. fact. We had two force of this time, left over. This time we're on the draw. So many more shots to draw a land. Yeah. You have you have literally twice as many draw steps to draw a land as you did the last bluff. This is the bluff. He's reeling him in as the set. He knows he's keeping. There's no chance. This is for us. And for you at home, yeah. it's Hollywooding he right now. He knows he's keeping. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. 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 <laughs> Come on, Joe. I was, well, he, he tricked us. Yeah. How do you throw that away? Well, it's possible that hand's just worse than the one that he had before, yeah, right? I mean, probably. <laughs> <laughs> I want to keep it. Let's, Let's also do this. Yeah, I think the odds that he just dies on the second or third turn is much <laughs> higher with that hand than the first hand. Yeah, hand. probably. So, but it's not about that. It's about that YOLO. You're on camera, you know. Just do it for the people at home. Yes. You know. Yes. See now you know. You don't need to be super, super conservative, starchy, counterbalance guy. You know, you yeah. can loosen it up a little I bit. I snapped it off. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't even have thought twice about it either. 
Come and get it. All right, well, it looks like he's drawn some lands and some counter spells. Oh, real hand. Yeah, it's mm. a tough guy. Here's a low battle. Pass the turn back. In the second to draw his card. Got an Arid Mace over there. Spell Pierce, too. Is Karakas that a misdirection? He's got a Caracas in hand. What's that draw? Is that Brainstorm for Koenig? It's a Scalding Tarn, pass turn back. So he's got a good Brainstorm available to him moving forward. The set draws a card, slides to the back of the hand. Karak is going to come on down. I believe he drew a Vendillion click. I think so. Pretty good with that land he just played. So a superb mulligan to six by the looks of things for Lissette. Not that that forgives his decision to mulligan no, in the first not. place. Definitely not. But as soon as this match is over and we go to break, I'm going to demand an explanation. Yeah, I, ha I hate feeling like I'm rewarding bad behavior. but no. Brainstorm here from Koenig on the unstep. Cataxian Probe, Lotus Petal, and land cards that are brought to his hand. Koenig's hand appears to be a little land heavy, so I wouldn't be surprised to see him get rid of some of this mana. Yeah. And, uh, and shuffle here at the end of the turn. He's thumbing a Mr. Rainforest in a pedal. I'm going to put the basic back in the, uh, in the fetch just because if I draw another Brainstorm, I have another fetch land already. Mm -hmm. Joe, uh, atypical of a lot of non-Death and Taxes decks, has two copies of Correct Case in his deck. Sure. I, I'm sure at this point it's just a, a concession to the Sneak and Show matchup. Yeah, I mean, with what Sneak and Show did at the Invitational, it's being just so big. So big, and the and the players who played it doing so well. You do have to make adjustments to your deck moving forward because I expect Sneak and Show to really just become a lot more popular. Mm -hmm. Really tough deck. All right, so the brainstorm happens. He's keeping one of them. Hmm. Well, he was debating for a long time between. He's actually keeping both. Okay. Of them. Hungry for mana, I guess. All right, hands up. Pith Needle, J, Spell Pierce, from Dillion Click, Brainstorm. I think that's an a that actual counter spell in the, the middle. Perhaps Misdirection. Okay. Another blue reactive card. Yes. All those counters. Although, actually, kind of light on. Light on real defenses here. Yep. Uh, draw a card. So cards that he uh, he put back. He redrew, did Koenig. There's Nylon. And there's a pedal. He just passed the turn back. Yep. So he feels like he needs the lands to be able to push through spell piercing friends. Well, he certainly does, right? He actually needs to set up enough to go off over the top of uh, Caracas. Yeah, too. that too. So he needs mana, and he needs a lot of red mana too, so you can understand why he wanted to keep mm -hmm. these pedals and, and fetch lands. So Seth's going to sacrifice that Aaron Mesa, go get himself a Volcanic Island. So if he does draw Red Elemental Blast or Pyroblast, he can actually cast it. Presents his deck over. So you see the clock in the middle there. We're winding down to about 17 minutes left. Here's a Brainstorm on the end step. Should be plenty of time for these two players to finish. Force of Will among friends that are drawn. It looks like he's also drawn an Island, mm -hmm. which frees up a lot of his hand, but... He won't have a fourth land drop for a while, by the looks of things. Yeah. But he has a lot of tools to protect himself now, now that he's found yeah. a white source of mana, a really blue source of mana. That allows him to pass, you know, protect himself with counter spells, click at the end of Brian's turn if Brian doesn't present anything, and start to get his beat on. So very careful brainstorm here. Going to set up the rest of the stages of this game is what this uh, what this instant is going to do. Yeah, Joe has to decide which card he wants to strand two turns from now. The Force of Will, he may have to cast his implications because he may want to keep the worst card in his hand as Force of Will fodder. And mm -hmm. so even though he's not shuffling his deck, this, this Brainstorm has a, uh, some pretty broad um, implications, which is why it's taking Joe a while. Completely understandable. Island going to come into play, the, uh, the land that you did mention. All right, Conan's going to sacrifice Scalding Tarn on the end step. I assume we're going to get a Volcanic here. Again, Ryan needs a lot of red mana, yeah. not, not just mana. So he's sliding by just about everything. He's almost go by two through the breach, so he does have to. He does have those after sideboard. Not too surprising to see him board those in. Yep. But Caracas will uh, do a nice job of invali invalidating that card. It show and tell comes with big problems, 
sneak attack, you know, Joe has a variety of, of disenchants and, and bensers and pithy needles and such, but through the breaches, it's permission or bust mm -hmm. to answer that one. Sneak attack off the top. There's a Misty. Sacrifice that, probably go get that third volcanic. And I think we might start. To, I, I think we might see some fireworks this turn if, if Koenig's fetching. Yeah, I think so too. Joe's got it covered though. He has a lot of powerful defensive measures. I think Joe might be debating about whether or not he wants to click in response to this fetch land. By sacking right away is sort of a declaration by Ryan that I'm about to go for it. And so there's some possibility that that Joe would want to click up front. But I like pausing here. He has a lot of counter spells. Let Ryan play into your permission. And if he doesn't do anything too threatening. Then you can click at the end of the turn and see what's going on. Yep, I'm with you on that one too. So here's a island from Koenig. Joe's showing a lot of discipline here. No, he's the reactive deck. No yeah. reason to move. At least not yet. Making his move, Ace Koenig. Sneak attack. Is that going to give the, the old head scratch? And you can see this is why Joe wanted to keep the Jace in his hand, even though the brainstorm didn't seem that complicated a decision. Because he's going to be stuck on three lands for a while. He's aware of this because he knows his draw steps. He wants to get rid of Jace and not other blue cards in his hand. So force of will, removing Jace. The set will take one. That'll counter it. Koenig says that's fine, pass the turn back. Head of turn, there is Vendillion Click. So the hand of Gristlebrand, Ember Cruel, and Sneak Attack. I think we might see the Red Enchantment go to the bottom. Uh, I think that makes sense, yes. Again, the Sneak Attack deck from this position doesn't have a lot of really powerful draws. Although Joe does have a Pythian Needle in his hand, so there is some argument for saying, yeah, you keep him. All right. And that's what he's going to do. I kind of dig it, actually. Get in for three, play Needle, name Sneak Attack. I mean, that click is really bad for Ryan, but he's got to feel even more helpless with Joe saying, yeah, they're, that, that's good. Mm -hmm. You keep those. Now, he's also going to play a top. He does it so he can keep Spell Pierce up. I wonder if that's risky attack from the Caracas as opposed to the blue land. The attacks him for the draw. He's going to actually cast this. The misdirection Spell Pierce. So show and tell is actually, uh, show and tell for Gristlebrand is actually quite powerful right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah it is. Ancient Tomb, not so much. That's going to come in. That's going to make sure that Kona has two, three, four, five, six, seven. He has eight mana. Joe going to spin the top knowing that he's safe because he knows the contents of Koenig's hand. Yet again, Gristlebrand, Emrakul, and Sneak Attack. But, you know, th Joe's not out of the woods yet. Uh, no, not at all. Definitely has some powerful draws to him. Uh, you know, the, the Caracas, assuming Joe leaves it up, is going to shut off Emrakul, but it's possible that Kona can overpower him with Grizzlebrand in the right draws. Mm -hmm. Pack for three, going to put, uh, put Kona down at 13. There's a land. That's, that's kind of the key thing now, right, where it's just Joe needs lands. The Ancient Tomb's going to come into play. Two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Emrakul's 15, just so you know. Yeah. Okay. And there's a counter spell. That's a, a, a big draw for, for Joe. Joe no sack of the fetch lane says, I want that counter spell. Get you for three, put you down to ten. Now Joe is very likely to be out of the woods. Yeah. Going to be a pretty tough game for Koenig to win now, I think. He needs, ru he needs running quality draws. Well, so it's going to pass the turn back, so we'll see where it starts. Force of will to draw. Uh, no blue card, but Koenig with no shortage of mana. Mm-hmm. Pass it. Joe going to spin the top. No interest in bouncing his Manilian Cook with Caracas, resetting it, and all that jazz. I think that would be a play you would consider if he did if his fourth lane wasn't Misty Rainforest. Okay. But I think a shuffle with the top in this position is more valuable than looking at Koenig's hand when the odds that his hand's just non-functional is, is really high. Like yeah, he's not true. doing anything. Yeah. And the sink and, the sink and Show deck has a lot of garbage in his hand at that point. And he's going to extend the hand. So Joe Lissette is going to win this match two games to one <laughs> over Ryan Koenig. Sorry, Ryan. Uh, a sad pouty lip, but Blue White Miracle is going to get the job done over Sneak and Show. Lissette's going to move on to 7-1-1, one, and, one, and we'll see how things break 
once this round is over, it feels like a ninth place to me. Yes. That's how it feels. Like a great